Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome back to my channel. I rarely introduce myself in videos and I don't know why since there's constantly new people joining the little the little derp squad. <laughs> I don't know what else to refer it to, but yes, my name is Laura Newseth. Newsif is my middle name, not my last name. A lot of people think it's my last name, but it's not. <laughs> So today I'm going to be sharing my January favorites. It's been such a long time since I filmed a favorites video. The last time it was just a general summer favorites. So I'm going to start doing the monthly favorites again and just like last year, I don't know if you remember, but I wanted to just share the top five products that stood out to me, the five products I was using the most. So I'm going to do the same thing this time around. If you follow my channel for a while, then you know that I've been a huge fan of this brand for a really long time, and I'm talking about Not Your Mother's. <laughs> so in the past, I've used uh, so many cans of the green bottle, just the regular dry shampoo, but a few months ago, maybe like November or so, I went to Walmart, and I noticed they had a brand new bottle of dry shampoo. This is the Plump for Joy Bodybuilding Dry Shampoo. And uh, I decided to buy it because it was, <laughs> I knew I love Not Your Mother's and it was new. Price is right. It's just a drugstore dry shampoo. So I decided to give it a go. It has an orange mango scent and oh, it smells so good. The reason why I've been obsessed with this dry shampoo is because it works just like the original Not Your Mother's dry shampoo but it gives you more volume. It smells a lot nicer and I find that it absorbs scent a lot better than the original. I also love that just the Not Your Mother dry shampoos in general don't leave my dark hair looking gray or white looking. It does leave a slight gray residue, but as soon as you just like work it into your hair really quickly, it just disappears. So if you've been out and about and you see this new version of the Not Your Mother's dry shampoo, pick it up. It's amazing. I'm already completely out of this one and I'm definitely going to get another one. I hope they have it in a little travel size. I don't know. I'm not sure. I know they have the original one, but this has been amazing. The next item I want to talk about is something that I did not like when I did my Glossier Best and Worst video. That was a few years ago but if you remember that video then you know I really was not a fan of this item and I don't know what's been going on with my skin it's just been changing a lot I don't know if it's a seasonal thing or if it's just a permanent thing but it's more combination too oily nowadays instead of just oily all over I find that my jaw area has become a lot more dry while the t-zone is still oily af <laughs> so I don't have to worry about the t-zone but some of my moisturizers have just not been doing their job as well, including the Bare Mineral Smart Combination Moisturizer, which I was loving in the summertime. But in the wintertime, it was just not working out for me. Especially with makeup, I saw a lot of the dry patches around my jaw be more visible. Um, foundation was just settling into my laugh lines a lot more. So it just wasn't working out for me. So then I decided to give this another shot since I had the, <laughs> had the tube sitting right there in my bathroom. So this is the Glossier Priming Moisturizer. And the reason why I used to dislike this formula is because it really doesn't do anything but moisturize your skin. But now that's become the reason why I like this formula. It's just a very gentle, lightweight moisturizer. If you do want more moisture, you can put a little bit more. It's meant to be a buildable formula and it says so right here. So I don't know, my skin has just been loving this and you can tell by the fact that I've squeezed out every single drop of this. <laughs> As you can see, look at this. This is as flat as I can make it go. This is how obsessed I have been with this moisturizer. So all I do is take around maybe like a grape size amount. So I don't go light handed with this. I go a little bit ham and I start working it into my skin, including the under eye area. I like that it's a little bit 
this doesn't have a cooling property but it just feels cool on the skin and it just absorbs into the skin so nicely it doesn't feel heavy it doesn't feel greasy um, it doesn't make my skin feel sticky afterwards I can put any any foundation on top and it just makes my foundation look super nice I wouldn't say this is a primer by any means not in the sense of a traditional primer i still go in with my with my milk makeup blur stick afterwards but i have noticed that my makeup looks a lot nicer and also my skin feels a lot less dry around my jaw area so you know what i take back what i said about the priming moisturizer i really like this now but i still love the priming moisturizer rich the other one in the little jar that's what i use at nighttime but this i have been using during the day and um, yeah, I regret what I said about this. <laughs> the other product that I wanna share with you is a concealer and this is the newest concealer that I purchased and it was during a Sephora promotion when they sent like the $20 off and you order over 50. So I was just like, I don't need concealer, but I want it. So <laughs> this is something that I purchased because of Alana Davidson. She constantly raves and raves about this and also the Lancome mascara that I talked about in my recent tutorial. But this is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I have the shade Light 2.75, which is Canel. Um, it looks like this. So the formula is... A lot less emollient than the Glossier Stretch Concealer, but still super blendable. I do like that this has a very natural, soft, matte finish, so it's not completely dry and matte. It doesn't look cakey. It blends out so seamlessly, whether you're using your finger, a beauty blender, or a brush, so you don't have to fuss around trying to blend it out or make it like blend seamlessly with your foundation it just works so well i use it both underneath my eyes as well as on any blemishes and it looks it makes your skin look like skin but just more even which is exactly what i want i find that it does crease ever so slightly underneath the eyes just because pot concealers are generally a little bit more creamier than what's inside of a tube but i don't mind it personally I just take my finger and kind of blot it if I do see like the slightest creasing underneath my eyes so it does literally everything I want it to the only complaint with the NARS concealer and I don't know if they plan on expanding the shade range but they don't have a light concealer with a yellow undertone this one is more of a warm neutral which is as close as I'll get to my undertone but the other ones do pull very peachy except for the very first shade which is Chantilly I believe that one was just way 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 too light <laughs> at first I grabbed that one because it was a very light color with a yellow undertone but I just pulled way too like porcelain <laughs> for me so I do wish they had a light shade with a yellow undertone because they don't have that so that's my only complaint but this shade seems to be working just fine for me the next product I want to talk to you about is a brush that I bought at Anthropology. I purchased it during a like 30% off sale that they had <laughs> a few months ago and oh my god this is just the most divine brush ever so this is by a brand called albeit albeit I don't know how to pronounce it it's a-l-b-e-i-t albeit <laughs> I don't know I'm probably making a fool out of myself right now but this is the all over face brush it looks like a big and chunky fan brush as you can see it's very fluffy all the fibers are completely synthetic and they're such a soft synthetic fiber <gasps> oh my god it's just whenever I would go to anthropology I would literally just pet these brushes because they feel so soft so when they had that sale I was just like you know what I need to stop petting these brushes because it's borderline creepy and I need to pick one up so I did get this one and I use this as my bronzer brush so what I do is I grab my bronzer and this is the bare minerals invisible bronze in the shade fair to light which is my preferred bronzer shade I just don't like anything that looks too orange on my skin this is a baked formula so I like to go over it a few times I find that the baked formulas are typically a little bit harder than the talc based 
powder formula so I just get a little bit on the brush and then I start swirling it onto my face it feels super soft and you can either do it sideways or from above but I find that you can just get a really nice and diffused line with this. It applies just the perfect amount of bronzer for me. Sometimes I do go a little bit more heavy handed depending on whether I want to just add a really soft layer of bronzer or use it more to sculpt my face. But regardless, I find that I can do ev like everything I want with bronzer with this brush. And the quality is just really, really nice. The price isn't that bad for something, you know, sold at Anthropology. <laughs> I find that a lot of their stuff can be a little bit overpriced, but this is totally worth it and I've never heard anyone on YouTube talk about this, so yeah, I wanted to share it with you because I have gotten a lot of questions whenever I do share it on my Instagram stories. And last but not least, I do have some lip products. So these are from Carrie Grand, which I used in my recent tutorial as well. These are called the Lip Whips and these are all natural. They're handmade in Seattle and they're just so, so buttery. So I was introduced by these things to the store Credo here in San Diego. Credo, like I mentioned in my last video, it's kind of like Sephora almost, but more boutique and everything's curated. So you find literally everything from hair products to body products, perfumes, makeup, everything is natural, cruelty-free, organic. So everything's just clean. So if you're a fan of clean beauty or green beauty, then that's definitely a shop that I recommend you to check out. But I was introduced to these by the manager, John. He gave me a little bag of samples. I was just like, oh my God, like, thank you so much. I didn't even ask for them. <laughs> but I was very appreciative of the fact that he just gave me that little bag of samples with my purchase of the Lily Lolo brushes, which are another thing that I love. <laughs> I'll talk about those on another day. So in that bag of samples was this lip whip in the shade Genie, which is a really nice kind of mauvey pink. And at first I thought, you know what? These are so overpriced. They feel like any other tinted lip balm. But the more I used them, the more I became hooked on this very buttery and silky formula. It definitely does not feel like, you know, like a Burt's Bees lip balm. It doesn't feel like a drugstore lip balm. It feels a lot more whipped, just silky, smooth, um, kind of luxurious in a way. It just feels good. <laughs> I don't feel any weird residue. It doesn't feel greasy nor sticky. It holds on to the lips quite well, and I do like the fact that these are handmade. So that's something to consider if you're a fan of supporting smaller businesses as well. But I was just so hooked on Genie. It was definitely something that I wore a lot in the month of December when my lips were a lot drier <laughs> than they are now. So I went back recently and I got another one. This one I purchased myself and it's in the shade Suji Red, which is what I was wearing in my glowy skin <laughs> makeup video. But this is just such a beautiful shade of red and it's so pigmented for a tinted lip balm. You can definitely wear it almost like a lip stain if you want to, if you want that kind of, I was just eating a popsicle type of look, but if you do want it to look more opaque, then you can just add another layer and it looks like you have lipstick on, but it doesn't even feel like you have lipstick on because the formula is so thin and moisturizing. You can also mix and create your own shades if you happen to have two or more so that's another option but i've been completely obsessed with these lip whips i regret saying that they were overpriced they are on the pricier side but you're getting so much product <laughs> and for something that doesn't contain any parabens the shelf life is very very reasonable this is expected to expire on december 2019 so you know that makes me feel a little bit better about buying stuff that i don't need but have been a big fan of the lip whips, highly recommend them, and they're natural. A completely unrelated favorite has been my new conch piercing, which is right over here. It's like tucked away. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can see it sparkle just a tiny bit. I got this a few weeks ago with my with two of my coworkers, Phoebe and also Rufy. Rufy ended up getting the conch as well. But Phoebe got another, like a second um, nose piercing and also another cartilage piercing. And it was just so spontaneous. <laughs> 
we had gone to a um, vintage flea market up in North Park and then afterwards we we're just like, you know what, it was Phoebe's idea. She wanted to get a piercing and I was just like, you know what, let's go. So I drove the three of us <laughs> to, to a piercing shop here in San Diego called EC2, no, EC Tattoo 2 which is by SDSU where I graduated from. I've been wanting to get my conch peers for the longest time and I'm so glad I did it. It really didn't hurt at all. <laughs> it was so weird. I didn't hear the loud pop that I thought I would. It was just easy peasy. So far the healing process hasn't been bad. You know, it's still a little bit tender, but it doesn't hurt at all. Like I can't even feel it on my ear right now. Still can't sleep on it, but that's completely normal. But so far, so good, and I'm glad that I got it. I'm hoping it'll heal a lot faster <laughs> than my other piercings, so I can switch it to a hoop sometime this year. But yeah, conch piercing. As far as music favorites, I've been listening to The Killers a lot because I leave next week. I'm gonna be following them around. I'm super, super excited. I uh, I cannot believe it. I've never done this before. <laughs> I've never followed like any of my favorite bands. So this is gonna be my very first time doing it and I could not be more excited that I'm doing it with my favorite band, The Killers. So I'm gonna see them in San Diego, in LA, in Las Vegas. This will be my first time seeing them in Las Vegas, which I'm like, I'm so ecstatic about it. <laughs> And I'm also going to be seeing them in Salt Lake City. So yeah, I'm so, so, so excited. And I haven't had like a proper like vacation in such a long time. So I'm also looking forward to, you know, not going into work and just relaxing for a few days, just like tuning out out of, out of that world. I know the simple things in life. So yeah, the killers have definitely been my favorite and I'm sure they will be my favorite next month as well <laughs> so <laughs> that's it for this video if you're brand new to this channel subscribe so you can see more of this in your subscription feed if you don't follow me on social media please do i am very very active both on snapchat as well as on instagram so links are down below and i'll see you guys very soon in my next video thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day bye i cannot buy any primer not for the lids not for my face i have my favorite primers for the eyelids it has been the nars pro prime primer that's the only one that works really well for me if i want a drugstore option the wet and wild photo finish primer works really